Okay, I'm actually pretty excited about this video because it's a culmination of a solid five weeks of work that I've been doing, building a powder coat oven, building a paint booth, and now I finally am going to be able to get the powder coat gun uh, set up and used. And I've got all my ducks in a row for today. I got the oven preheated. I have already outgassed the part that I'm going to, or the sign that we're gonna uh, paint here today. This thing has been, this was delivered about five weeks ago. You can see the condition of the box, it's all beat to hell. Uh, so that's why, that's why it's open already because I had to make sure the stuff in the box wasn't destroyed. At any rate, it looks like it's okay. We'll find out today for sure. So we are going to uh, open this up and get everything assembled. This is the Columbia Coatings Hyper Smooth O3 LED. And I ordered it, like I said, about five weeks ago. Well, I probably ordered it six weeks ago. It came about five weeks ago. And, you know, it was a, a uh, horse before the, or a cart before the horse kind of thing. I didn't have a powder coating oven even at that point. So it's just been sitting until I got all the other stuff done that needed to get done. Uh, I actually got this separate. It doesn't come with it. You do get a bonus uh, gift when you uh, buy this system. You get a list of things you can pick from. You can pick plugs. You can pick uh, a, a paint pack. Uh, all kinds of different stuff. I may have actually picked those plugs. But the only thing I noticed in that shipping, there was a problem. There was a pinhole in the bag of, of red uh, Super Mirror here. It wasn't a big mess in there, but a little bit. And the starter paint kit came with five of these. Uh, came with five of these basic colors here. So we have uh, Super Mirror Blue. I think that came with it. I think the Ag Yellow came. Super Mirror Black came. Super Mirror White came with it. Super Mirror Red. paperwork and I think this last thing here is the main unit so what differentiates the uh, the O3 LED from the O2 LED as best I can tell is just the, uh, the dosage regulator and this is for fluidized hoppers uh, I do not have a fluidized hopper I'm not sure if it's really on the menu right now I gotta see how all my other powder coating hardware holds up before I start expanding on this. So you'll see here on the side, we've got these two bolt holes. These two bolt holes. Got our high temp tape. I believe the high temp tape and this and uh, probably this copper hanger here Pretty sure that stuff came with the starter kit that had the five pounds of paint in it. 2508, uh, that's just a hair thicker than 14 gauge. So plenty strong probably for what I use on. Most of what I hang are, or most of what I'm gonna be powder coating are uh, two foot 14 gauge steel signs. Yeah, that should hold it just fine. We will find out, because we're gonna use that today. Opening all those bags, and here's the bolts inside here. I'm guessing that's a one-way check valve. Well, it, it would appear another bag of paint is leaking. Looks like probably the mirror black. That's unfortunate. We are going to use that today, though. I do like that they give you a 90 degree uh, air fitting so your line's not bending over. That's nice. That's something I would have wound up adding. So, let's get this thing installed. Oh, 
It looks like they used they used riv nuts in the housing here for the bolts to go into. I like riv nuts personally. I use them quite a bit. I think what I'm gonna do is get this thing ready before uh, before we do anything else. Okay, so done. Insert hopper pressure hose into the feed air outlet. Next, connect your preferred air fitting to the bottom of the standard hopper. We're gonna go ahead and put the 90 on there because uh, we're mounting it right here. It'll probably be sitting on the shelf, so we want the line to go straight out right away. Oh, I do not like how loose that is. That's, that's a problem. That is not good. I do not like the feel of this at all. It is actually getting tighter, which is a little bit concerning, being honest. So, let's try this. Oh, I did not like the sound of that. Yeah, that whole center piece is turning inside the nut. So I think we're gonna have to just take the nut off. You know what, that's why it's loose. The nut is actually, as I'm trying to unscrew this, the nut is actually threading down and it's tightening this whole assembly. It's pinching the bottom. That's why now it's nice and tight. So, we're going to need to figure out how to hold this thing and pop this line with this quick disconnect out. We may have to wind up putting a pair of vice grips on these threads, and this is plastic. These threads are not going to survive this, so this is a... Uh, the fact that there's nowhere to put a wrench on here, that's honestly not a great design. There we go. Well, at least I didn't have to squeeze it too hard. I might not have actually damaged the threads at all there. Well, that's still not a great design, to be honest. That's enough. You know, with plastic, you don't need to go crazy tight. Yeah, and we are tight. This should be good. Put the other end of the feed line in it here. Okay. All right, next step, connect one end of the latex powder hose to the 3 8 barb on the lid. And we're going to go ahead and skip the 6 where we install that 90-degree uh, barb. We're going to clean that lip up a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Connect the other end of the latex powder hose to the gun barb at the base of the powder coating gun. So, we're going to need to get that out of the box. Here's all your nozzles. This is the, uh, the wide mouth multi-coat. I've seen a lot of people who only use this nozzle, so this will be... We'll see if that works for what I'm doing. If this works as the only nozzle that I need to use, awesome. I already tell this latex is going to be real crappy to work with. This latex line is surprisingly heavy. As you can see, it is pretty darn thick. And I'll tell you what, it went on the gun barb a whole lot easier than the rest of them. It makes me wonder if I'm going to need a hose clamp down here. And this is a keyed fitting. I don't know if you can see all these tabs here, so it will only go in one way. And I'm going to do this the way that it's pictured in the book, which is filter first, then quick disconnect. That filter is probably not going to last very long. 
But luckily I have uh, a dryer on my shop air, so shouldn't be an issue. And you don't really have to worry about restricting your airflow on a system that's only gonna run 30 PSA. That being said, you don't wanna plug the darn thing up. That's good. I think we're gonna go ahead and throw some Teflon on here too. Next deal, plug in the power cord. I know how to do this one. I'll turn it off first though. This looks like your standard computer power supply type uh, three pin. So the good news is if you ever mess this cord up, you won't have any trouble finding a replacement. One of those numbers. All right, power's plugged in. Insert standard nozzle and flat nozzle. I'm going to use a standard nozzle because you're supposed to use the standard nozzle with the uh, wide body, the multi coat wide body. So let's get that standard nozzle in there. around the nose cone. I believe this wide mouth you just slip right on the end. Hmm. There we go. Boy, I'll tell you what, that is a tight, tight fit this wide mouth going on the standard nozzle. Okay, and the rest of this is all just about the different nozzles and patterns and all that other good stuff. Operations. I need to get my airline over here and some power to plug into. And we'll be ready to go. Now, I'm gonna have to adjust my supply pressure down to 30 before I plug this airline in. I believe right now it's sitting around 90. We now have our supply side air lowered down to 30. Okay, we're going to fill the hopper up first. I think the first one we're going to do is a super mirror black. I get a feeling there's not going to be a good way to do this. Well, I got to be honest with you. I was expecting more of a it's turning on effect when I turn it on. It helps when you plug the power cord all the way in. Let's get the fan going. Ooh. And I want you guys to see something here because I've heard about this uh, in a lot of my research, this has been a huge complaint from people. Watch the top of this bottle. That is not okay. When you first hook up this system, make sure you have this wound all the way out. And then make sure you're holding the trigger while you feed it in. Otherwise, you could very well run into this problem. Because if you're not holding the trigger, it's not going to show you what the pressure is here as you adjust it. Only when you're holding the trigger will it show you that. So, make sure it's spun all the way out and make sure you're holding the trigger when you adjust this. Otherwise, you're going to have all that crap shooting out the top of your bottle. So, you may notice there, I took the cap off the bottle. I pulled the seal out of the, the bottle. 
I clean the seal, I clean the lip of the bottle, and I clean the lip of the cap. And now, we are running five PSI, no leak. Let's turn it up a little bit and see what we get. All right, we're running seven PSI, no leak. So that seems to have solved the problem. There's really no excuse for it to ship and let to be shipping a product like that. Now, like I said, it's a known issue. I guess it's kind of on me too because I knew about it uh, before I uh, bought this system. What I'm hoping is that this thing lays down powder coat so beautifully that it completely negates that ridiculous feed bottle seal. All right, let's see how this thing does. what it's worth this is uh, the first thing I've ever powder coated so I'm learning as I go as well sprayed the back yet it's already almost done static when it comes out of the end of this thing. Okay. Next up, in the oven. Now, unfortunately for me, the window I built in here is it's already getting accumulations of, I don't know if that's humidity or what, in between the panes. So when I replace that inside pane, you can see it's got the big crack through it. I gotta replace that. Uh, I'll have to clean it out real good. But to my eyes, it looks like that paint is already starting to flow out, starting to gel. So I am going to shoot a temperature on it here in a minute. I really hope I didn't put too much paint on it. The last thing I want to do is get runs on my very first job. But I'm going to shoot the temperature on it here in about a minute and see if it's up to 400 and then I'll start the clock. This particular paint, there she is. Okay, the Super Mayor Black cures in 10 minutes at 400, 15 at 375, 20 at 350. So I'm running 400. Um, Honestly, it would be more efficient for me to do 15 at 375 or 20 at 350. My oven takes too long to heat up. But 
I'm going to check the temperature on that part here in a second. And your cure time starts when your when your part reaches that temperature, not the oven. So I'm going to take a look at it here. You guys will be able to see the temperature and the, the part from here. So let's check this out. Parts at 350, so we have a little bit to go yet. Now, because the part is already at 350, uh, I have a 20 minute clock starting right now. No matter what, the part will come out in 20 minutes because it's already at the 350 curing temperature. Now, if my part hits 400, I can drop my clock down to that 10 minutes. Now, most of the powders that I got from Columbia are 10 minutes at 400. Uh, this is one of, uh, I think this is the only one I got from them that has a lower temperature, longer duration cure. I'm sure they have more powders to choose from that have different curing times and temps. Uh, it's just the batch that I have happens to be this temperature and this time. All right, we're gonna check her again here. All right, we're over 400, so. We're gonna keep it here. It's actually a bit on the hot side. I don't know why it's that hot. All right, I'm turning off the heating elements because we're getting too hot now. All right, temp's coming down, that's a good sign. So I don't know if it's my temperature gun or if my sensors aren't calibrated right, but this is reading 381, 380 now. And uh, you can see it's still trying to turn the the heating elements on. I turn them off down here and you can see I'm running no amperage. As soon as you turn these on the amperage kicks up. So I don't know why these two I suspect it may be the temperature sensing gun that I got here. I think that might be the problem. There we go. Perfect. I will get a second gun. Uh, before I do anything else because if it's just a $40 gun that's messed up, that's a much easier fix than uh, redoing all the circuitry. So we're going to leave that in there for three more minutes and then we'll pull it out and let it cool down. I would call that a success. At least for a first effort. It'll get better. That's going to do it for Galt's Garage today. Thanks for joining us. And this is the culmination of uh, a good five weeks of just nonstop work, weekends after work. So uh, I was pretty excited to do this. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned. I think the next video I release is going to be wiring the control panel for the oven. This was a lot of work and... Uh, a lot of your home-built powder coat oven videos out there don't have the actual wiring of the uh, control panel so I'm going to uh, do a real kind of in-depth video on uh, wiring this control panel and since it's essentially the same they're all fairly similar you know you have your PID you have your timer I haven't even used the timer yet uh, you got the PID uh, on my particular oven, this is the master power for the uh, for everything, basically. And then these two right here are the on-off of the heating elements. This is the first two heating elements, the second two. This is the circulation fan, and these are the lights inside the oven. Uh, obviously, this is voltage and amperage that you're using. So when I turn on the elements, you can see that amperage jump up. There's one set of elements. There's the second set. Uh, I haven't wired up the alarms yet. I'm gonna put one on the timer. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the other one. But uh, that's it. Thanks for joining Galt's Garage, and I will see you next time.